Hey, good afternoon. Welcome, everyone, to the first official Bush Group podcast. We are extremely excited to have you guys on board today. It is 7 January 2022, and this is episode one. Today, we have on board, we've got Rachel Cousins with the Bush Group based out of our Portland location. Welcome, Rachel. Hi, guys. Hey. I'm so excited to be here and excited to finally start our blog podcast deal. So um, be ready for more, and, uh, and we'll get going on with today. Awesome, awesome. And then our special guest of the day today is Russ Ann Larrabee with Next Mortgage. Russ Ann, thanks so much for jumping on with us today. Thanks for inviting me, you guys. Great honor. Um, looking forward to working with you guys and um, really am happy that you asked me to do this. So I'm excited. No, no, we're, we're happy to have you. So uh, just to give everyone kind of an idea of what this podcast is going to be, we're going to be doing two podcasts a week. And what we're trying to do is just bring as much information um, to people about real estate uh, that we can. So Rachel and I are licensed real estate agents within the state of Maine. We work for Next Home Experience. Um, Next Home is based out of Bangor, and we are on the Bush Group. So the Bush Group is a um, group based out of Next Home here. So um, Rustan is a member of Next Mortgage, which is a new mortgage company that just recently started up a product of CMG. And uh, we are extremely happy to have Rustan on board. Um, one quick caveat that we want to throw out there, all information that we give you guys today, if we're, if we're referring to stats or anything like that, it is compiled from the main multiple listing service. Um, so we get all of our information, all of our stats from that. So uh, today's stats were pulled right around 9 a.m. So they do change throughout the day. If we were trying to pull them every minute, as soon as a listing goes pending, it's, uh, they, they keep changing. But so these stats were pulled right around 9 a.m. Um, so I think that's what we want to jump into right off the bat. We want to kind of give you guys a market analysis of what's going on, um, where the market was in 2021, where we think it's heading in 2022, but also take you back to 2020, uh, because I think it's important when we look at what 2021 was, we want to look at was there growth or was there declines um, in certain areas. So we're going to jump right into the state of Maine as of today at 9 a.m. when I pulled this on the multiple listing service, there was only 2,006 active listings in the entire state of Maine. So, Rossanne, Rachel, as you guys know, uh, Rossanne, you've got a lot of buyers. Rachel, you work with buyers and sellers. 2,006 is not a large number for the amount of buyers we currently have in the market right now. Not at all. Correct. No, not for the state. Yeah, our, yeah. So, our buyers are seeing it for sure. So Definitely. I mean, it's seeing multiple offers already this first week of January has felt like it's July um, in last year's market so one of the things that we look at in the state of Maine was roughly right around 900 was the increase um, right around that number for 2021 the state of Maine sold for residential only so all these stats today are going to be residential sales only they're not multifamilies they're not commercial properties um, so 24,187 homes were sold in 2021 that's up from 23,279 in 2020. So as a whole, the state of Maine did increase over the last year. So when you hear a lot of terms like we're in a listing shortage, um, I, I really don't like the way that's been marketed over the past year because the stats don't really say that we're in a listing shortage. What we're in is we're in a stale listing shortage. So more homes are still selling. We just don't have the extra homes that are expiring. They're hitting the market, they're going, and we don't have a lot just sitting active. So have you guys seen that kind of in the areas that you're you're working in and with the buyers you're working with, Roseanne? For me, um, I've had lots of pre-qualifications and they're excited and they found some place to make an offer on and you know, just not winning that listing. So we're working on some strategies to um, look at different down payment options, different um, mortgage insurance options to be able to be competitive with their offers. I think that's a really cool way to do it because it's it's kind of funny. I, you were showing me in one of the ways you could um, work an offer one time was recently that uh, you actually, a higher sale price, they got a lower payment. It was pretty, pretty unique what you were doing and I think it was very creative on how to work with your client the best way possible. And that, that was really cool. I appreciate you sharing that with me recently and showing me kind of some of the stuff. Sure, yeah. Rach, what are you seeing um, you know, in line with that as far as sales up and down and throughout the state of Maine? Do your buyers feel like there's a lot on the market or do they feel really pressured in, in the areas that they're looking? So a lot of my buyers are finding what they want, which is great. Um, the only problem is, is that we're having to get creative with our offers and how we're coming about these listings. Um, 
a lot of times here in Southern Maine, you know, a listing will get posted on a Thursday or Friday and all offers are due by Sunday or Monday. So um, being quick and being diligent with these buyers and then also working really closely with their mortgage lenders to try and find out to see if there's any way that we can strengthen an offer to try and get a foot in um, is most definitely mm -hmm. key. But we are we're, we're working really hard still, but um, most definitely these these listings aren't staying. So. Yeah. I think that's kind of one of the things we didn't do today and we'll talk about uh, next week on our on our podcast is we'll talk about some days on market time but really what we wanted to focus on today was you know number of sales in the community what the plus or minus was and then how many are active in that community right now um, but I, I think the the realtor term for 2021 was probably terms matter um, when you're writing your offer the terms are so important this year um, when you're going into a 15 20 I've seen some up above 30 offers and those little terms, those time frames, those are making the difference. Um, it's not always the price. That's I think a lot of people think the price is the only thing that matters when they're putting in the offer. And, and there's a lot of terms that go into that purchase and sale that really do um, affect what the seller is looking for. So, um, so let's just jump right into some of these numbers right here. So we pulled some communities from Northern Maine. We pulled some from Southern Maine just to give you guys um, an idea of what, what we're seeing total. So we pulled Bangor Brewer, Hamden Herman, Holden, Scarborough, Brunswick, Gorham, and Sanford. And then we pulled seven counties that we're going to focus on today. So when we look at Bangor, Bangor actually had one of the larger growths um, when we look at last year for a town. So in 2020, Bangor sold 402 homes. And in 2021, they went up to 444. So an increase of 42 homes got sold in Bangor, which is right around a 10% increase. That's huge. Um, and then Brewer actually saw a decline. They went down. They went from 155 to 135, so a decline of 20. Hamden went up four from 138 to 142. Herman, um, one of the more sought after towns in the area. It's um, definitely, a, it's a hot town and a lot of people are always looking at it. Um, one of the reasons is its lower mill rate um, attracts a lot of buyers to that town. Um, and it's, it's one of, definitely, we see a lot of people flocking over there for that. Um, and that went from 85 to 93. So they saw a plus eight, but where they were only at 85, it is close to a 10% increase. So it's, it's substantial enough for us to take a look at. Holden, another town that we kind of watch um, due to its location. It's close to down east. It's close to um, Bangor, and it's a, it's a school of choice town right now for the high school. Um, and that saw a, a drop in 10 sales this year. So some of the school of choice towns we actually saw um, a little bit less sales in. It seemed like people were kind of hunkering down and staying in those towns this year. Um, Scarborough down in where Rachel's at went from 390 to 417, so plus 27 there. Uh, Brunswick, an area that we cover, went from 310 to 320, so we saw a plus 10 there. Gorham, one of the towns uh, that we've been focusing on and then taking a look at, went from 285 to 259, so um, less people coming to Gorham in, in that year. Well, not less people coming, just less sales. Um, could have been less listings, so 26 was that number. And then Sanford saw an increase of plus two, so you know when we look at Sanford and Hamden, plus two, plus four, we just attribute that to the natural market, the rise and fall. Um, that's that's a pretty standard increase right there. Um, the towns where we saw double digits were the ones that we felt were a little bit closer. And then we dropped down into Penobscot County. So the counties were kind of the interesting one because we heard a lot of people were flocking um, to Maine through different you know news medias. I heard that there was a lot going on, mm -hmm. and it was interesting to see where our buyers were coming from and listening to what what we were being told they're coming from and. Cumberland County went from 5,156 to 5,239. So they did see an 83 home gain um, in 2021. Penobscot County had one of the largest gains in the state of Maine, though. They went from 2,112 to 2,290. So that's plus 178. Piscataquis County actually saw a decline. And I was actually talking to our broker about that today because we have a lot of agents up in Piscataquis County. Um, there's a lot of lakes up there that a lot of people are looking for those Airbnb properties. They're looking for the camps with their family. One of the reasons we're kind of attributing that possible decline of 34 uh, for 43 to 449 is a lot of people started using their camps more than they ever had before. So people were less willing to part with some of those lakefront properties. Um, due to COVID, everyone was, you know, those became a hot commodity and 
people started appreciating them a little bit more um, without traveling around the country. And then uh, we look at some of our down east areas, Hancock. Um, went from 1125 to 1161 in that county, so plus 36. Knox County went from 759 um, up to 811, so a plus 52 increase. York County down your way, Rach, went from 4,156 to 4,185, so only plus 29, but still a substantial amount of sales. Uh, when you look at Cumberland and York, they make up the majority of the state of Maine sales right there, almost half, um, just shy of that, a couple thousand shy, but for 16 counties, two of them do make up the, the majority of our state right there. And then our biggest increase that we looked at, again, we didn't pull all 16 counties, we just pulled these seven, uh, but I just found this one to be an interesting one that we wanted to look at, was Aroostook County, so up north, all right? So Roseanne, <laughs> we, we did this one just specifically for you because we, we know you're a Northern Maine girl and you love pulling those numbers up there. So 887 in 2020 um, is what was sold in Aroostook County jumped 180 this year to 1,067. So Rooster County saw a larger overall gain than Penobscot County as a whole. So that's an interesting number to look at that people are kind of looking for those more rural areas getting out of the cities possibly. Um, that's what we've been hearing throughout the year. And I think it's kind of interesting that that is what we're seeing play out here. Um, what do you guys attribute those to? Have you guys seen your buyers looking for those? Russ Ann, when you take prequels, do you see buyers saying they want a more rural area? And, and Rachel, do you hear more buyers talking about wanting to get out of the city? I think for um, I think the work from home has really changed the landscape because people, you know, more people are working from home, so people are looking to get out of the bigger cities and go into these more rural places. So having those capabilities is definitely increasing those numbers in those um, counties. So and the, the rural yeah, communities no, I mean, have really I... stepped up, in my opinion. They've they've done a ton to bring people in and. I, I think you're right. They're searching for that yeah. work from home in an area that they feel like they've got space. Yeah. No, I mean, I've had um, a couple clients this year specifically that I'm thinking of in the front of my head, um, beach houses, lake houses down here. Um, they're able now to take their business and not work from home, but they're able to set up at their beach house or their lake house and bring their kids and, and you know, just, just have an overall better space for them. So we're seeing a lot of that. Um, and then also a lot of people, of course, who want to move out of the bigger cities. I have a couple of clients also in the front of my head right now that were in the Boston area, not so much of a fan of it anymore, um, and then both made the choice to move to Maine. So a lot of people from New Hampshire and Massachusetts, that's what really drove business last year on my end. Um, so a lot of out-of-state buyers, um, which kind of made it a little difficult for some in-state buyers as well. So. No, absolutely. And I think when we look at all of that, we can compile that 2021 was definitely a year where there was a lot of buyers um, out there looking to move. We saw a lot of younger buyers ready to go. I think a lot of the younger buyers are getting, um, they're realizing that they, they're paying similar rents and they're trying to get out of that rental situation a little faster in, in some cases. Um, but one of the things that we want to kind of do is how do these numbers from 2020 shape 2021 foreshadow us for what we're going to see in 2022 and i can already tell you it's this winter it seems like it's gotten off to an absolute rocking start the the first week of 2022 mm -hmm. i've been in the office every day my phone hasn't stopped ringing um we've got clients talking about listing properties obviously we have no i you know we can't make a crystal ball prediction here of what's going to happen but mm -hmm. Rosanna, can you kind of give us a little bit of an idea of what we're looking at you know, possibly rate-wise in 2022? Are we going to see increases? Will we see decreases? Obviously, everyone knows we saw a lot of decreases in 2021. Are we going to yeah. see that again? Or yeah. what's, what are they saying? So, well, like you said, I mean, I certainly don't have a crystal ball, but, um, you know, they are definitely predicting rates will start to increase. And they have a little bit since, you know, fourth quarter uh, 2021. Um, but really, I think what everyone needs to focus on is more what is it going to cost to not purchase because I think they're predicting that these values of these homes are not going to decline they're continually increasing so if rates increase a quarter half um, and your housing increases so you're looking at a two three hundred dollar higher payment a year from now if that house has increased in value and our rates have increased a half a percent you're looking at 
two, three, four hundred dollars more per month. So is that worth waiting? It's almost better to jump now, I would think, with rates still, you know, holding low um, and our values are where they're at. I think a lot of people are hoping that they'll go down and I just, we don't see it. You know, they're going to continually increase. Um, historically, they've increased even with, um, like from 2008, they declined, but they, you know, it's not like the stock market. It doesn't drop to 50 cents. You know, it's not that huge fluctuation. So I think that now is the time to definitely jump on the rates where they're at and the values. Yeah, Rach, um, where do you think your clients are going to go from there? You know, when, when you hear people talk about that, what's what's some of their biggest concerns that they have when it's when it comes to mortgages right now that, you know, we can share with Russ Ann? Yeah, I mean, a lot of my buyer's concerns um, and probably one of the biggest questions that I get is, okay, if I make an offer and it happens to be over ask and let's say we get the home, um, am I going to be upside down on it come five or six years? Um, that's one of the main concerns from a lot of my buyers and um, I think a lot of it stems from what we've had in past occurrences and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that the market's stable enough now. Um, and, and we're just gonna eventually go up from here. But I think that that's one of their main concerns. Um, and then mortgage-wise as well, it's always the big question about rates, where those are going, should I do it now, should I wait? Um, and then of course, you know, with the way that they are now, I always encourage people to start looking now, but um, I really can't guarantee anybody what it'll look like in, you know, six to 12 months, so yeah. that's hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the interesting thing when we, when we go into 2022. I, I know going into 2021, we were leaving that first year of COVID, everyone was trying to figure out how the world was going to turn. Um, we're kind of turning into now a, a world living with COVID and not, it's, it's kind of becoming part of our everyday lives. So I think people are starting to get back to normal a little bit more um, than they were. I think what we saw going into 2021 was there weren't a ton of extra buyers left over. Um, when I talked to a lot of realtors, they didn't have a lot in the pipeline left that didn't find a house in 2020. You know, most of our buyers were able to find properties. Right now, I, from what I've talked to a lot of realtors and colleagues from even other companies that they've shared, you know, they still have a handful of buyers that they weren't able to find properties for last year that are now looking. So influx that with the new 2022 buyers that weren't looking last year, we're still in that shortage of inventory. You know, is this gonna change as far as, as Russ Ann said, rates may go up, but prices are still increasing as well. So. How is that going to increase over the over the course of the year? I think is going to be, um, we can't answer that today, but throughout our podcast each week, we're going to try and give you guys as much up-to-date information as to what's going on with the current state of the market. Russian, when, when you're working with a buyer and we kind of call you up and we say, hey, we're ready to present an offer. We've shown, shown some buyers some properties. Um, what are some of the things that you think will help a buyer going into 2022 to prepare themselves to making sure that they are buyer ready in this intense market. Right. So, I mean, we always say a pre-qualification, you know, um, so that you're not going in blindly. You know, you want that pre-qualification to know what you're qualified for um, and what are they willing to go above and beyond. So, you know, a lot come in and say, well, I have X amount of dollars for a down payment. Okay. So maybe for two thousand more dollars, we can increase um, we can increase your loan amount, and it won't change your payment significantly, and it would win that offer for you. Um, if you have a borrower that has you know ten percent down and is looking at a small MI payment, maybe um, the offer goes a little bit higher the MI goes a little bit higher, but we do an upfront payment. Maybe for $1,500, you can do a single pay MI premium. That way your payment doesn't change. Your um, d closing costs go up $1,000, $1,500, and you've won that deal just by making that small um, change to your offer, increasing your offer. Like we kind of foreshadowed earlier, the terms in 2021 were very important on an offer. and. And as we're looking into 2022, we know that those are going to be important as well, um, making sure that you put yourself in the best situation to succeed, but also making sure you're comfortable with it as well. So that's, I think, the thing that, you know, we talked to a lot of buyers about in 2021 was, yeah, we can win this offer. You could probably do this. You could probably do that. 
and giving them advice, but what are you comfortable? We want to make sure you're comfortable with what we're giving you advice for. If you're not comfortable with yeah. that, then when we talk about a good deal, that's not a good deal. We want to make sure that you know every client is comfortable with those increases. And, and I think just for our viewers, when uh, Roseanne was talking about MI, um, that's mortgage insurance. Um, for sorry. Oh, no, no, yes. no, don't be sorry at all. I just uh, yeah. you know, we're just week <laughs> one of uh, the podcast. We've got a lot of viewers that are going to be watching them. You might not understand some of our lingo right off the bat, but um, some mortgage insurance. So that's one thing we're going to do in a future podcast. We're going to have uh, Russ Ann back on again, and she's going to break down some MI costs. She's going to talk about closing costs, kind of go through the whole transaction to give you guys a better idea of what it's going to take to what we call win the deal, um, so to speak. Rach, if you were to have to give any foreshadow for 2022, what would be the best advice you gave your clients today to start the year? Um, if they tell you, hey, I, I might be looking at some point in 2022, maybe August, maybe the fall, what would you say to them now to prepare? Yeah, I mean, definitely getting yourself financially ready is um, step number one. Familiarizing yourself with a mortgage lender that, that you adore, which I, you know, we, we, we have a list of them that do some really awesome work. So as much as you need to love your realtor, you also need to love your mortgage lender as well. Um, familiarizing yourself with the process is huge, so um, that's also part of our job as well. We love selling homes, but a huge portion of our job is to educate. So when our clients come through and they have questions, um, we need to make sure that we're there and answering those. So for our upcoming buyers for this year, which we do have a few that are going to start looking, you know, once the snow stops, um, getting in touch with that <laughs> lender, you know, starting that pre-approval process. Um, and then asking the necessary questions and financially getting yourself ready. So whether if that be paying down debt or whatever it may be, just just don't buy a car um, and <laughs> don't please. <laughs> are, are we allowed to talk? Because we know what that car is going to be worth <laughs> in five years. Well, my boat actually appreciated this year, so it's uh, things are going crazy. <laughs> I was just. But uh, are we allowed to talk about the snow stopping during a blizzard? I don't even know if that's actual etiquette. Yeah, I know. Right? I, was about to we're, say, we're, I think we're, we're too early in, in January of... to be thinking about the snow stopping. Yeah, I know. I, I don't <laughs> no, see it's... it stopping anytime soon, but, you know. <laughs> we're still in first winter. We've got second winter, third winter. That thaw that comes in March that makes us think that it's over. And then we'll get fourth and fifth winter again. So we've still got a few winters we've got to get through. Um, but I just want to thank you guys so much for coming on board today. Just to give our guests kind of an idea of what's going to happen, uh, we're going to be back next week. So Rachel and I will be um, hosting this podcast every week for the Bush Group. We're going to have other members of our team um, from the Bush Group. Sorry, sometimes I can't even pronounce my own name. Um, from the Bush Group on here. And uh, we'll, we'll bring some insurance agents on here. We're going to bring some um inspectors on we'll, we'll talk to a lot of different people um, we actually have a couple clients that want to come on board and talk about the process that they had throughout 2021 and I think that's going to be a really that's cool great. segment I'm really excited for some of those because um, some of the clients have gone through 2020 and 2021 and so they'd seen such a changing market and their perspective changed a lot over the course of it um, we're really excited. So um, the Bush Group has grown over the last year. We're up to nine agents now. Um, so we've got Rachel and Dan based out of Portland. Um, so if you get anything in, in Southern Maine and really all the way up, Rachel and Dan still cover the Bangor area. So um, they've got family and, and roots up here. So I think we're actually going to do a showing of a, a property next week with Rachel and Dan when they come up. I'm excited to hang out with them for the day. Uh, we've got Sierra Grogan um, based out of our Bangor office. Uh, Olivia LaSalle based out of our Bangor office. Uh, Daria Dexter, who's also in our Bangor office. John Seavey, who handles um, some of our Dover area, but also covers the state of Maine. Um, my father actually just joined the team, Bob Bush. And then we just uh, brought on another agent, Cooper Hogan. Um, so we're really excited about the growth that we've seen with the Bush Group. So um, we truly do have an agent to serve every area, every corner of the state. And we're extremely excited uh, to bring you guys on. I don't think I missed anyone, did I? There's, there's so many of us no, now. That, uh, no, I'm just counting. counting. <laughs> I feel like my mother when she was yelling at me and my brother as a kid, like, which name am I yelling right now? Um, yeah. but no, uh, we're, we're super excited for what's going to be to come. So um, this segment, just starting off today, episode one, I hosted today, but Rachel will be hosting some future ones. Uh, we'll kind of alternate and give some different perspective of 
of some things going on. Rosanne, we're so excited and honored that you would join us on our first week one. Yeah, thank podcast. you. Yeah. Um, you're welcome back anytime. We're going to be doing it twice a week. So thank you. Anytime you want to pop in and, and give our, our clients a, a little bit of what's going on in the mortgage world, we'd love to have you. Um, I'll give you guys a, you. Just a quick yes. minute to just say, uh, say goodbye to everyone and then leave us with one last note. So I, like I said, honored to be here. Thanks for asking me. Um, it's always good to get the information out there. Um, looking forward to a great year for you guys. You've got a great team, um, increasing your numbers and helping people in the state of Maine get into, you know, the home that they've always wanted to live in. So excited to see what you guys do. Thanks, Arsene. Oh, me. Okay. You, Rachel. I was like, all right, what was next? Um, so on, on my end, I'm really excited that we're starting this. I'm really excited that we're going to be branching out a little bit this year with the Bush Group with some new video productions and really just trying to um, reach more out into the social world. So i um, really thankful for everybody who watches and tunes into us. Um, on that note, we would really love feedback. So anything yeah. that you guys would love to see on here, anything you guys would love to know about, questions, anything like that, please throw them our way. Um, and as always, su super honored to be here and uh, and really excited for the future. Awesome, awesome. I love you guys are gonna have some clients yeah. and you know some home buyers on here because it's a big process. You know, it's scary. There's a lot to it, a lot of moving parts. So I think um, just having kind of like a peer review for people that are thinking about buying a home. Great idea. I can't wait to see it. No, awesome. We're, we're excited for that too. And it's just fun to hang out with our clients again. You know, we, they're not just clients, they become mm -hmm. lifelong friends. So it'd be great to have them uh, right. with us in the studio. And thank you so much uh, to both of you for coming on board. And uh, we just want to thank you guys all for tuning in. So we uh, look forward to seeing you guys next week. And again, reach out to us with any questions. Um, you can email us at bushgroup207 at gmail.com. Any content you'd like to see, any questions you have. Um, hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, our YouTube channel. So these will all be streamed on all of those services. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And we look forward to getting you guys the best answer we can. Have a great day and have a safe and happy 2022.